Wilfredo Leon is one of the most dominant attacking players in modern volleyball. I would like to talk about this amazing player with a difficult fate in today's episode. Biography, sport career and analysis of the game style. All this is waiting for you in the video, so as usual we won't delay any longer, let's go! Wilfredo was born on July 31st, 1993 in the city of Santiago de Cuba, which is the second largest Cuban city after Havana. Leon had to go through a very difficult path before becoming a superstar of world volleyball. It started before he was born. After all, according to doctors, his mother Alina Veneroboza was infertile. So, the fact that she was able to get pregnant was a miracle for the whole family. That's why there was an interview in the Polish press under the heading Wilfredo Leon is a gift from the god. The boy started playing volleyball at the age of 7 under the guidance of his mother. His father, also Wilfredo Leon, was a wrestler, but despite this he wasn't against his son's hobby. The little Cuban put the finger on volleyball a little earlier. His mother was familiar with the coach of the women's team, so at the age of 6 he already started going to the girls for training. But he was engaged separately from the general group. Leon spent most of his training time with a 2 kg stuffed ball. From there, it seems that his path to the world record of the serve speed began. The coach's philosophy also contributed to this. You have to hit the ball so that it cries. And it seems like Leo has managed to make him cry. He always won all competitions they had on trainings, which means the strongest possible blow competition. And due to the fact that a good volleyball ball was a rarity in Cuba, it often turned out that some balls would explode after the hit of the future star of the world volleyball. After two years of training with girls, Leon was finally invited to men's training. And at the age of nine, he was invited to the first inter-school competitions. But Wilfredo didn't really want to participate in them. Instead of fighting for victory, the boy preferred to stay at home in front of the TV to spend time watching cartoons. But his mother, who returned home from the store, scolded her son. In front of the TV, you will not become a master. Either you remain the master of fairy tales, or you go there, do your job and win this tournament. Wilfredo didn't argue with his mother. He slowly got up, took his bag and went to the match. And after a couple of hours, Leon returned not only with good news, but also with a diploma of MVP of the match. Since then, training and competitions have always won over cartoons and fairy tales. But as for many Cubans, Leon's life wasn't a fairy tale. Cuba was presented inside the country as a flawless place to live in, and due to the fact that there was no internet on the island of freedom, it was impossible to disprove this fact. Athletes, due to attending international competitions, were one of the few who managed to see life outside their native state. For the first time, Wilfredo managed to be in another country at the age of 11. Then, he, along with other young Cuban players, went to an international tournament in Venezuela. But, due to the fact that this country has just experienced a coup d'etat, it only confirmed for Leon that everything in Cuba is fine. But the trip to Mexico had an indelible impression on the player. Numerous clothing boutiques, eateries and even McDonald's. And all this against the background of the fact that at home he was wearing clothes after his father and in stores there's not even enough toilet paper and it's very difficult to get flour. It was difficult to share such information with anyone because even their own parents didn't believe in the words of the young boy. So Wilfredo sets himself the task of showing mom and dad what he saw abroad. But for the first time, Leon was able to do this only after he got in Kazan. The first trip to the supermarket with his parents turned out to be a real cultural shock for them. Wilfredo's mom couldn't even imagine that rice does not need to be cleaned, sifted and washed before cooking. But you can just throw a bag into a saucepan, wait a little and it's good to go. Even if this caused Alina's amazement, then you can probably guess what feelings she experienced from other things and events in Kazan. After that, the outside hitter took his parents to Poland, Germany, Spain and other countries. And only then did they realize that all the stories about Mexico weren't fiction. To develop his sports career, Wilfredo had to live in the sports school in Havana. It was constantly leaking there. And during the rainy season, which lasted at least for several months, he had to live in a flooded room without even windows. Already at the age of 14, Leon got into the adult national team of Cuba, where from his older comrades, he not only gained experience in terms of playing, but also in terms of earning money. 
The volleyball player had a sports scholarship of $8 per month and this is with an average salary of ordinary hard workers in Cuba of $12-$15. And in order to somehow increase this income, he brought clothes, tires, spare parts, computer and lots of other things that could be obtained from the countries he was visiting as a national athlete. Somehow he even managed to stuff almost 100 kilos of extra luggage into the sport bag, which the athlete himself is still surprised by. Like many athletes in those years, Wilfredo faced a choice. Should he leave Cuba or continue to play for the national team on hard labor conditions? As many already know, in the summer of 2022, Leon went through surgery on his knee and may miss the upcoming World Championship, but health problems began back in 2010. There were times when a volleyball player came to the airport in a wheelchair and his leg looked like a balloon. And during the final matches, the young player couldn't even raise his hand, which is why he had to play on painkillers. It would seem that after the tournament you can relax and take care of restoring health, but the Cuban doctor said that everything was fine and they just needed to train more, but Wilfredo couldn't even walk properly for a while. And just a month later he was drafted to the army and even though the service for athletes lasted only 45 days, unlike the standard two years, he still managed to experience all the severity of military trainings. He crawled in the rain, ran through puddles and slept on the ground. And I remind you that by that time he was already the silver medalist of the World Championship and the bronze medalist of the World League. In addition to all physical issues, Cuba's government severely limited athletes financially. As an example, in 2009 Leon received a check for $10,000 for the title of the best server of the World League, but he received only 13% of this amount, the rest went to Cuba's treasury. So, it is not surprising that many athletes simply fled the country, disappearing after international tournaments. After all, only then were they given passports. The rest of the time it lays in the safety of government's officials. But unlike many titled volleyball players from Cuba, Leon wanted to do this the easy way. Wilfredo received an offer to play for a European club, so he asked the federation to let him go. The federation not only didn't approve the request, but also expelled the player from the national team. And let me remind you that at that time the 19-year-old player was already the captain of Cuba's national team. So he had no choice but to leave his country. And the Cuban chose Poland as the place for his next stop. Why Poland, you ask? Everything is simple. Wilfredo had been talking to a Polish girl on Facebook for a long time with whom they maintained a relationship at a distance. And they even managed to see each other several times during the performance of the Cuban team in the World League. This girl was Malgorzata, Leon's future wife. So it didn't take long to think about the place of relocation. But he didn't live with his fiancée. But his agent, Andrzej Grzyb, helped him settle in Europe. He invited the player to his place in Rzeso. There, the Cuban continued to train while serving a disqualification. At first it was about 4 years, the FIB then issued an official verdict of 2 years, but as a result they decided to shorten this period and a year later Leon had the right to officially play for the new club. And despite more profitable offers from Korea, the player chose the Russian championship, which was more suitable for him in terms of playing style, where he joined Zenit Kazan. However, the fans of the Polish Rezovia could also count on the young star. After all, he trained with them during the disqualification period. Surely everyone remembers the same Wilfredo Leon, who won 15 out of 18 possible titles for Zenit Kazan and also ended his Russian stage of his career with an ace in the Champions League final. But few people also remember that Leon was injured in the very first official match for Kazan's team. It is good that there were no serious consequences of this and Wilfredo spent an outstanding segment of his career in those years. Why did Wilfredo leave Zenith? No matter how many people think, it wasn't about money at all. Over the course of his career, he plans to try himself in the strongest volleyball world championships. He has already visited Russia, currently he plays in Italy, and also he has plans for the Polish and Brazilian championships. But more importantly, he doesn't just want to play, he wants to win every trophy for his teams. For a long time, the Club World Championship remained impregnable for Zenith. So, only after winning this tournament, the player thought about moving to a new championship. 
After all, he really wanted to try out a different volleyball culture. Strength-based volleyball is still overwhelming in Russia. Tall and powerful players set the tone in the Russian Super League. And in Italy, fast and technical volleyball is preferred. Perhaps the next season, Leon would be in the Polish Championship. But he failed to win the Italian Super League again, and Perugia also failed in the Champions League. Wilfredo went to the operating table to restore his knee, which was madly disturbing him during the crucial parts of the season. So, if Wilfredo wanted to try himself in the Polish and Brazilian championships, then how long is he going to play in Perugia? It seems to me that Leon won't even think about changing clubs until he wins the Champions League with the Devils. Indeed, in the Super League, Perugia won even before Leon, but the Champions League remains an impregnable fortress. And given the purposefulness of this volleyball player, he will try with all he has to achieve this goal. At least that's what I thought until the recent news came out that Leon is planning to leave Perugia after the end of this season. Well, as for the Polish national team, everything was quite obvious. Leon has a wife, a house, a daughter in Poland, he speaks Polish. So even despite the offer from the Russian volleyball officials to play for the Russian national team, Leon chose Poland without any doubt. For him, everything was quite simple. If he fails to play for Cuba, then he will represent the country of his wife. And if the Polish fans hadn't accepted Wilfredo, he would have focused exclusively on club volleyball. After all, he had no desire to play for other teams. Let me remind you that Leon received Polish citizenship in 2015, and after serving all the disqualifications, in 2019 he got the opportunity to play for the Polish national team. A huge list of Leon's achievements, both personal and collective, I don't see the point in listing them. Firstly, it is long and secondly, you can find it by the very first link in any search. So I propose to go directly to the analysis of the technique and game features of Wilfredo Leon. Let's go! Before starting the analysis, I first recommend that we familiarize ourselves with the anthropometry of this athlete. According to many sources, Wilfredo's height is 201 cm, although his wife claims that her husband's height is 203 cm. At least she had such data after a personal measurement. We don't have any exact data regarding the maximum touch point, but according to unofficial data, the mark is somewhere around 380 cm. What is the secret of such a jump? As the player himself admits, there is no secret in this. First thing first, it is a genetic predisposition. Simply put, he got the jump from nature. But outside hitter also devote a lot of time to weight training. However, he doesn't use any intricate and complex exercises. All his strength training looks quite unremarkable. But thanks to them, he gained about 10-15 kilograms of muscle mass. After all, he came to Kazan with a weight of 85 kilograms, and now this value is in the region of 100 kilograms. So, if you are not a 2 meter genetic freak, then it will be quite difficult for you to adopt the technique and style of Wilfredo Leon. But this, nevertheless, doesn't prevent you from looking at it purely out of curiosity. When analyzing, I will rely on the current physical form of the player, as well as his game for Zenit Kazan, which many consider the best in his entire career. Leon has one interesting technical feature, which he hasn't abandoned to this day. And we are talking about the tilt of the body before the jump. Yes, it can help you increase your takeoff height by working your pelvis and back. But firstly, in this position it is quite inconvenient to scatter. So more often this technique is used during a jump from a place. And secondly, in this position it isn't very convenient to maintain eye contact with the ball, which is quite an important factor in volleyball. Leon uses a fairly short approach, which often fits in two, three steps. He simply retreats to the position and waits for the pass to follow him. This approach to the run-up has not changed much throughout his career. The same run-up in the Cuban national team in Kazan, in Poland and in Perugia. Moreover, there is no difference in what situation he is, during the receiving, during the attack, from the front line or plays a pipe from the back row. If you are not a genetic monster, it's still better to use a more active run-up to create a starting speed before the ball's hit by the setter, rather than stand and try to reach the maximum run speed in 2-3 steps. What can be seen even in the example of Leon when he performs a full-fledged approach. But this happens quite rarely. 
What has changed over the years is the variability of the attacking actions of the hitter. While playing for Zenit, most of the attacks were in the area between the first and sixth zone. And it didn't matter how many blockers were in front of Leon, whether it's three or one, the direction almost always remains unchanged. In Italy, Wilfredo has become more technical and more often tries to beat the block than tries to pass it in height. Here, the long and short diagonal directions are favorites. The player doesn't attack in the line direction too often. Although, if the situation allows, then he also resorts to his zenith attacks. I don't see any point in talking about the reception and defense of this player. I'd better do it in the next analysis, where I will talk about the Libro. In the meantime, you can try to guess who it will be. I'm waiting for your options below in the comments. There is nothing unusual in the blocking technique, a standard cross step with an amplitude swing of the arms. The hitter is located near the center, which allows him to be an active participant in the triple block, as well as to help middles, which often brings a result. But because of this, situations periodically arise when his own player can be left unfollowed. At Zenith, as in the case of the attack, Leon had a rather limited list of options for performing a powerful serve. He performed it exclusively from the first zone and he tried to serve towards the direction it flew better. But often, most of the serves went to the area between the first and sixth zones, or simply to the sixth. If it was better to serve straight on some day, then he served straight. It seems that everything sounds very simple, but the speed of Leon's serves significantly complicated the life of the receivers. In Italy, Wilfredo began to not only rely on his own strength, but at the same time try to look for weaknesses in the reception of the opponent. So much more often you can see that he's trying to find a specific player in the reception, who in his opinion will cope with his serve the worst. To do this he can move to the other side of the field. Again, Leon has no special secrets in the power of serving, all the same principles from childhood. Make the ball cry and if it doesn't cry, then you have to break through the wall with it. Well, that's the end of the review of one of the best players in the world, if not the best. I really enjoyed working on it, because I was also able to get to know the difficult fate of this wonderful volleyball player. Hope that same as I, you liked this video and leave your happy like. And also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, lots of interesting things await you here. Write in the comments whom you'd like to discuss in the next analysis. The most popular volleyball player in the comments will go to the analysis of the next episode. And as usual, this was Nick, love what you do and you're bound to succeed. See you soon, bye.